It's a question I get asked a lot, particularly from people looking to upgrade from a crop frame camera to a full frame camera, and that is, should I get a Canon EOS R or the 5D Mark IV? And today we are comparing these two camera bodies side by side to hopefully answer that question for you. Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Kai Song, and today we are looking at these two legendary cameras side by side. With the release of the Canon R5 and R6 mirrorless camera systems, many people who are out there looking for a bargain on the older models are wondering if they should get themselves a 5D Mark IV or an EOS R. The 5D Mark IV came out in August of 2016, so it's a little older than the EOS R, which was released two years later in September of 2018. Now, I've personally been using the 5D Mark IV for a few years already for things like wedding videography and photo sessions, as well as corporate video and photos for things like short films, and of course, a lot of my YouTube videos, so I can definitely testify to its quality and robustness. On the other hand, I've had the EOS R now for just over four months and have used it for lockdown photography sessions, as well as using it to create a short film, and I've used it to film my entire one hour and 21 minute Skillshare course on resource filmmaking in 4K. I'll link down below if you're interested in checking that out. So how do these two cameras compare side by side? Well, first up, let's talk ergonomics. And the first thing that you will notice is that the mirrorless EOS R is noticeably smaller than its DSLR counterpart. And that, of course, is because it doesn't have a mirror and all the mechanisms required to make it work. This also reflects on the weight of the camera, with the 5D Mark IV weighing in at a heavy 800 grams, the EOS R being a little lighter with a weight of 660 grams. And this might not seem like such a massive difference at first, but if you're holding these cameras all day on a long shoot day, then you will start to notice how much lighter that EOS R body is in comparison to the 5D Mark IV. One of the things that makes the EOS R a great content creator's camera is the flip out screen. Especially for these kinds of YouTube videos where you can quickly flip the screen over, use the dual pixel autofocus to ensure that your face is in focus and you're good to go. The 5D Mark IV on the other hand has a fixed screen which makes things slightly more tricky when it comes to filming yourself. And what I normally do when filming YouTube videos on the 5D Mark IV is to link the camera to my phone first via Wi-Fi using the Canon app and this helps with things like making sure the framing is correct and that my face is in focus. And a great feature here is that the dual pixel autofocus works through the app to ensure that your face is in focus throughout the duration of the video so that you don't have to reshoot. You also get a higher resolution screen with the EOS R with 2.1 million dots compared to the 1.6 million of the 5D Mark IV. Overall, the EOS R is just easier to get out and shoot vlog style video footage of yourself than the 5D Mark IV. So the EOS R has that as a massive plus for content creators looking to get themselves a full frame camera. One of the advantages of the 5D Mark IV over the EOS R are the dual card slots. Having dual card slots for SD and CF cards screams out to professionals that this is a camera for professional use. Whereas the EOS R, although a very capable camera, simply doesn't include dual slots. And for that reason alone, there are many professional photographers that I know who wouldn't use this camera for their corporate jobs or wedding sessions. Both cameras have the same 32 megapixel full frame sensor, allowing expandable ISO ranges from 50 up to 102,400. When it comes to low light shooting, they both do very well at higher ISOs without the addition of too much noise. And if you're currently on a crop frame camera or APS-C camera, then it's more than likely that you're looking to upgrade for that reason, having that bigger sensor. And if you haven't used full frame cameras before, you will definitely be impressed with the low noise images and video that you get in low light with both of these cameras. When it comes to processing power, the 5D Mark IV uses the Digic 6 Plus processor, while the EOS R has the newer Digic 8 processor. And I noticed that this makes things just that little bit more responsive in the EOS R. But just by way of clarification, the 5D Mark IV is in no way a slow camera. It performs very well on fast paced, busy shoot environments like weddings. There are 61 focus points on the 5D Mark IV, 41 of which are cross types, while the EOS R has 5,655 autofocus points along with eye tracking functionality. For dynamic range comparisons, the DxOMark.com puts the EOS R down as having a dynamic range of 13.5 EV, while the 5D Mark IV has a slightly better score of 13.6. 
In fact, the DxOMark.com scores the 5D Mark IV sensor slightly better on overall performance when compared to the EOS R with a score of 91 versus 89. So read into that what you will. So those are some of the main specs, but how do the actual pictures compare? Well, we took these two cameras out for a side-by-side -side comparison photo shoot last week to pit them up against each other. To be honest with you, I would personally struggle to tell the difference between the picture quality of these two cameras using the same EF lenses. As a little disclaimer here, I need to mention that both cameras were using the same EF lenses. So that means that I had to use an EF to EOS R mount adapter on the EOS R, which is an RF mount. And I've heard that native RF glass gives extremely sharp picture quality. So as soon as I can source some RF glass with the same focal lengths, I'll reshoot and double check that as a comparison video. But for now, I'm using the same glass across both cameras. They are just so similar in a lot of ways. Even analyzing the raw images in Photoshop or Lightroom, you've got very similar picture quality to play with. And the quality of the pictures from both of these cameras, especially when they're paired with L-Glass, is very good. Clearly, they are made for professional use in a professional environment. When it comes to continuous shooting, the 5D Mark IV has a continuous shooting rate of 7 frames per second, while the EOS R is rated at 1 extra, giving you 8 FPS. Both of these cameras use the LP E6N battery, which is the same for the 6D, the 6D Mark II, the 5D Mark III. And for battery usage, the 5D Mark IV seems to consume less power, probably down to the fact that it doesn't have an EVF. Its battery life is marked at 900 shots, while the EOS R is recorded to take about 370 photos per battery. I personally noticed that I swap out the battery a lot more while filming with the EOS R than I normally would with the Canon 5D Mark IV. And talking about filmmaking, it might be a good idea at this junction to look at the video capabilities of these cameras side by side. When it comes to video, both of these cameras film in 4K, albeit with that dreaded crop factor of 1.7, which is the reason that I tend to use both of these cameras mainly on the 1920x1080p HD setting. And the recording options that you get with the EOS R and 5D Mark IV are quite similar. You can film at 24 and 25 frames per second for 4K and HD, and then at higher frames up to 50 and 60 FPS for 1080p, as well as the 120 frames per second option at 720p. Now, one of the things that make both of these cameras appealing for video is the addition of C-Log or Canon Log, which means you get an extended dynamic range, which in turn means you retain a lot of the details in the shadows and highlights of your picture, which makes things much better for your color grading later on in post-production. However, for the 5D Mark IV, you have to pay to get this installed, and that means taking it into a Canon dealer, leaving it with them to install, and currently this costs around £70, or about $90 to $100, to get C-Log installed on your 5D Mark IV. For the EOS R, you get C-Log installed as standard, so it's there, in the menu system, not greyed out when you purchase it. The 5D Mark IV also offers clean, uncompressed full HD video up to 60p via HDMI with audio 
and a color subsampling of 4228 bit. But the EOSR has an option that allows you to record 10 bit 422 video to an external recorder, giving you over 1024 bits per color channel, resulting in over a billion possible different colors. But you do need an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5 to be able to do this. And of course, that is an additional cost. And you're limited to filming in 4K. So you've got that crop and you can't film at higher frame rates for slow motion. So while this is a great option to have, Canon has seriously restricted its usability and overall convenience of use. As mentioned earlier, I've used the 5D Mark IV for a number of video projects from weddings to corporate events, interview videos, green screen work, short films. It's just so versatile and really reliable. I've never had any issues with overheating on long shoot days and it's, it's just so robust. It just keeps on going regardless of the tasks that I've thrown at it. It continues to turn around results. And although I've only been using the EOS R for a few months now, I have been able to use it for a short film and my Skillshare course as mentioned earlier. And I can definitely see the same dependability of the 5D Mark IV reflected in this camera. So no doubt Canon has taken as much care and attention and planning into creating the EOS R as they did with the 5D Mark IV. Now I've already done individual review videos for the EOS R and the 5D Mark IV and I'll leave a link to those down below if you want to go and check them out specifically. And you guys have also been very active in commenting on those videos and I wanted to highlight some of the things that you've noticed when using the EOS R and 5D Mark IV. First up, regarding the 5D Mark IV, Andrew Perkins said, it's a great camera, the focusing is amazing even in low light, my only gripe is that it's got a slow burst rate and it's quite noisy for wildlife. So I guess that's what mirrorless solves. So I may make the leap soon for that reason. Otherwise the 5D Mark IV is a fantastic camera and a huge step up in photo quality from my old 7D. Again on the 5D Mark IV, YouTuber D Panker says, as a serious hobbyist for over 40 years, it serves all my needs. Best all round camera for landscape, portraits, wildlife, even birds in flight, albeit at seven frames per second, but the autofocus system is amazing. The touchscreen, B mode and timer combo is tailor made for long exposure photography. Also excellent for videography, unless you wanna use the 4K, which is impractical except for short runs. Of course, there are way better DSLRs for video, but as a part of an all round package, the 5D Mark IV shines. Depanka continues by sharing some of their particular experience saying that the 5D Mark IV is rugged, never had a problem shooting snowy owls in extreme weather in Canada at minus 25 degrees centigrade in blizzard-like conditions, got it wet by the spray in Niagara Falls and nothing happened, same with extreme hot conditions, the blowing sands in the Namib Desert, no issues, sits very stable in my hands, gives me very good shots in low light, handheld, without jacking up the ISO too much, would not exchange it for a lighter camera. So that's what some of you were saying about the 5D Mark IV. So moving on to the EOSR, Roger Thomas, who's from Australia said, I recently bought an EOSR with the 50 mm 1.2 L lens. I was hoping for the R5, but its price point didn't make sense. And the R6 has too small a sensor for my wants. So the R was a good fit, despite knowing it's not a perfect camera. I feel it's a massive step up from the 5D Mark III in many ways. Love the lens and the R body, eye and face autofocus and just ordered a Ninja 5 on special, so we'll be fully set up for playing. I look forward to learning and testing videography now with great 10-bit 4K footage available. Shame it doesn't output 10-bit 1080 though. So I share a lot of those sentiments from you guys on both of these cameras. And I think just learning from and going to advice from the Canon camera community in general will help a lot of you in your decision making. So which one of these cameras should you consider getting? Well, it all comes down to a number of factors. Primarily, what are you looking to do with the camera that you decide to choose? Most clients are not going to see the difference in the quality of the photographs for these two cameras. So if you're using them mainly for that purpose, for photography, then you might want to specifically think about whether you really need your card slots or not, which the 5D Mark IV offers. Additionally, you will want to think about the lenses that you have available to you. If you're looking to invest in the RF glass, because you want to then get an R5 or an R6 later on, then maybe the EOS R is the right camera for you now. But if you have legacy EF glass, then you will need to get an adapter to work with the EOS R. So you might want to consider going in the direction of the 5D Mark IV. 
For video work, these cameras both do a good job at professional events. Bear in mind, they both have an internal recording limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds, something like that. They both have crop on the 4K, but the EOS R does have C-Log installed as standard, and it does offer the option of external 10-bit 422 video, which might play a part in your decision-making process. For a lot of us, price will be a fundamental determining factor. And currently, if you go to the official Canon store, you can purchase a new 5D Mark IV for about £2,879 or $2,500 from the USA store. And the EOS R is going for around £2,000 and is also at around $2,000 in the US. Now, thanks to the release of the Canon R5 and R6, Secondhand units do seem to be flooding eBay and the secondhand marketplace, and the price range seems to be around $1,400 to £2,000 or $1,700 to $2,500 for a 5D Mark IV, or £1,200, about $1,400 to $1,600 for the EOS R. This is very dependent on the condition of the body and any accessories that you might get. So, what do you guys think? Are you keen on getting the mirrorless EOS R? or the 5D Mark IV DSLR camera? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you haven't done so already guys, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and make sure you hit that little bell for notifications. So that's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement and inspire. And I'll see you next time on Kai Creative.